Hello and welcome back to the channel of nonsense. I'm Tim and this, this is my favorite slipper. It doesn't have a name and it smells quite bad, but it is very comfortable. And I'm gonna use it as an analogy to explain the 2023 Citroen C5 Aircross. But it's not just a slipper, because if you look inside it, it's got some garlic. This is the quirkiness of the Citroen C5, the Frenchness. And I'm gonna attach it to my slipper using some engineering. Looks like sellotape, but it is engineering. So there we have it. A very comfortable car, as comfortable as a slipper, that is quirky in French, but there's more to it. My garlic's fallen off. We're just gonna roll with it. Inside is a battery. The engineers at Citroen have given this particular C5 Aircross a battery. So it is a comfortable slipper that is also quirky in French, and it's also a little bit electric. That garlic's gone quite far down in this car. Welcome to my review of the Citroen C5 Aircross plug-in hybrid. I've got a fly on my head. That was slightly weird, but at least no vampires are gonna eat my toenails tonight, just the gerbils. But anyway, the Citroen C5 Aircross is Citroen's family SUV. It costs from 26 and a half thousand pounds for a basic one with a petrol engine in Sense Plus trim, which still isn't that basic, to be honest. This one's a plug-in hybrid in Shine trim. It costs about 36,000 pounds. So you pay a lot more for your plug-in hybridness, but, that mid-spec trim gives you loads of safety kit as well, which we'll get onto in a little while. It's four and a half meters long. And because this is the plug-in hybrid, it weighs 1.8 tons. That is 300 kilos more than a regular petrol one, which is a little bit porky. Now, size-wise, I would say it's almost the perfect size, four and a half meters for a family SUV, because it's gonna be big enough for your kids and have a big boot, but it's not so big you can't park it. And they all get reversing cameras as standard. Hip, hip, hooray. Now I should talk about fuel tanks because it's a plug-in hybrid. It has a slightly smaller fuel tank than the regular 1.2 petrol. It's got a 43 liter tank instead of a 53 liter tank. Doesn't sound like much, but it is. I only get 300 miles to a full tank of petrol once the battery is depleted. And the battery in this car will get you about 30 miles in my experience in real world driving. And I've been living with this for a week. I've done 350 miles and I think I know what I'm talking about. But if you get a normal petrol one, you get 10 more liters. So probably more like 450 miles to a tank. That's quite boring. Let's look at some of the other bits. Before I get in the life by flies, does garlic not work on you? Miserable bastards. If you've not seen a Citroen C5 Aircross in a while, you might think, isn't that the kind of blobby, curvaceous French thing? And it was, but it got facelifted at the end of 2022. Someone just got murdered with a gun over there. So have this single headlight unit. It used to have this kind of split headlight, but it looks much more modern, I think. And ein bisschen mehr Deutsch, in my opinion. I love it. It looks premium and people get out of your way when you're driving it, apparently. Now, this is the part of the C5 Aircross where we need to bring smelly old Jeremy back. Sorry, he didn't have a name, did he? My smelly old slipper back because it is super comfortable in here. In the UK, all C5 Aircrosses get Citroen's advanced comfort seats, and they are really comfortable. The only thing they don't do is hold you in place when you're cornering. We'll get onto that in a minute in the driving bit. All models get a 12-inch digital dashboard, which feels very modern and high-tech, and a 10-inch infotainment system, which has got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you plug in. And it's actually pretty good, and the basic six-speaker setup is pretty good as well. I wouldn't feel like I need to rush out and upgrade the speakers, which is quite rare. Now, my annoyances are that you've got to use the touchscreen for a lot of the climate control stuff adjusting temperatures and there's a row of buttons down here for your know, windscreen heater your back window heater but it's quite hidden and also wireless charging is an option on most models you've got two usb a's down here another 12 volt socket some decent storage some cup holders and door bins that can hold one and a half liters of water or um uh, drumsticks which are the sour ones they're really good i'm not sure about how hard this plastic is on the doors and it looks like someone has hammered tic tacs into plasticine on there it's a bit weird but otherwise it's a very comfortable cabin and my final annoyance is it's a french car so it's got a half width glove box super annoying because there's a fuse box in there but anyway let's check out the back seats to see if you can put your little darlings back there or not. Now, this is a very unflattering shot because I've just had a meal deal at ZZ's and I'm full of Italian food. But anyway, back seat space in a C5 Aircross. Headroom is good. I smacked my head on that getting in and out. I'm six foot three. That's my driving position. And I have got knee room, but not loads. And as you can see, this kind of bulges out. So my two-year-old with an isofix space and a child seat, which I'll stick a shot of in, uh, she can kick that really easily. Her feet are basically jammed into that all the time and she's 
She's like a pocket-sized child, which isn't great. Now, my four-year-old's okay because her seat is smaller, but if you've got really bulky child seats, they won't have much space back here. And the seats, they do slide and recline individually like that. But again, I can only slide forwards from this position. So yeah, that's as far back as the seats go. I expected them to go back further, frankly. The other positives though, the tunnel in the middle is really small. So your middle seat passenger can actually fit in. I've had my girlfriend in the middle between my two kids for some short trips and she's been fine. There's a single USB down there so she could charge her phone if she wanted to. But yeah, because the seats are individual, it's a good thing, um, but it does mean they're quite narrow. And sitting here, I've got a seatbelt buckle where no one ever has been. So yeah, it's, um, it's a mixed bag back here, frankly, being poked in the bum by a seatbelt holder and uh, yeah, only just got enough knee room. Should we check out the rest of the car? I think we should, because I need to digest that garlic bread with the balsamic onions on top. Now, a quick word on the engines before it starts really hammering it down. This is the 225 horsepower plug-in hybrid, which has got a 1.6 four-cylinder petrol engine with 180 horsepower, and the rest is made up by a powerful electric motor. It can do about 30 miles in the real world on an electric charge. However, it makes this car expensive, so I'd recommend getting the 1.2 petrol, or there's the 1.5 diesel, which I've had when I used to run a Peugeot 3008, and that gets about 50 mpg. The petrols will be more like low 40s. This, with a flat battery, has been getting me consistently 39, 40 mpg over a couple of hundred miles. Obviously, with the battery full up, it can drive up to quite high speed on electric power, and you get like 150 mpg. But yeah, if you can keep it plugged in and charged up, it's great on electric power, but as soon as it's gone, you're getting 40 mpg. Now, a bit of behind the scenes action. An hour ago, I got back from Essex visiting my mother for the weekend with my kids in tow, and we filled the boot of the Citroen. I say filled it, we didn't actually. We barely touched the sides. It's a 460 litre space, but even this has been okay. It kind of depends how big your bugaboo is, and mine is quite small. Um, but anyway, you've got no space under the boot floor other than a little tray for your charging cable and it comes in this removable plastic tray that does give you a bit more space when you get rid of it but not a huge amount i would say if you want to maximize your space get the petrol or diesel version now you can get a tow hook for this or a tow bar rather and that will let you tow up to 1.3 tons on a braked trailer on the plug-in hybrid 1.45 tons on a manual diesel version yippee you've got some hooks down here you've got a 12 volt socket and that's about your lot What's that doing? Anyway, we're going to go for a quick drive in the C5 Aircross. I'll keep it short, I'll keep it sweet. You have to hold the start button for longer than you think to start it. Same in all Peugeots and Citroëns. You can't just prod it, you've got to keep your paw on it like a cat pinning a mouse to the floor or something. Then you put it into D and away we go. Now, the first thing you notice is how easy it is to drive and see out of. It's got big windows at the back corners. Normally that's a big blind spot in modern SUVs, but it makes this very easy to drive around town. And as I said, all of them get reversing cameras as well. So visibility is really good. And that kind of adds to this car's relaxed sense of, well, well-being, because it's a very comfortable car. It uses Citroen's quite basic technology. It basically puts a whoopee cushion at the top of each suspension corner of the car. So when the suspension has crashed over a bump, it doesn't jar you. It hits this whoopee cushion and that softens the blow. It's quite a cheap way of making suspension more comfortable, but it does work. And at low speeds, you might think, oh, it's not really doing anything. But when you get to 50 miles now, 70 miles now, this becomes an incredibly relaxed cruiser. As I said, I've just been around the M25 for a couple of hours and I almost fell asleep. It was very relaxing. It's more refined in the cabin than quite a lot of its German rivals that cost loads more money. So well done, Citroen. You've made a very relaxed family car. Now, the downside to that is it's got soft suspension. So when you go around corners, I've noticed my girlfriend and my kids kind of falling out of their seats a little more than in some of its rivals, certainly more than in the Peugeot 3008 that I ran for a couple of months over Christmas. That is firmer and doesn't lean as much in corners, but it still doesn't feel sporty. So I would rather just have the comfort and go around roundabouts a bit more slowly. So yeah, well done Citroen, a very well judged car. It's easy to use and it's comfortable. Now in terms of performance, this has got 225 horsepower, but it doesn't feel like a hot hatch. It just feels, it feels pretty quick when you're going for it, for that 180 horsepower petrol engine, and it gets from 50 to 70 nice and quickly on a surge of electric torque. And when it's fully charged, you can boot it away from traffic lights and it's properly rapid, but 
yeah, it's not going to be a, a sports car when you get to the corners, it's just quick. The petrol and diesel ones, they've got 0 to 60 times of about 10 and a half seconds. So again, it's a sensible car. It's not for herring around racetracks, obviously. It's a family SUV, and I'd rather have more MPG and less performance. Like I said, it's a well-sorted family car. Anyway, I've waffled on way too much about how this drives. Let's head back to me for a conclusion. And dinner. Probably don't need it after that Italian, to be honest. I should probably just have, I don't know, grater cup of soup or something on some rye crackers and then drink some miso soup and then squirt it all up my butt. So why do I like the C5 Aircross so much? Well, to sum up, it's a bit of a softy. I'm fed up of estate cars and SUVs with massive wheels that jar you over every pothole, wake your kids up and just feel more unsettled than they should. Now, I'm not saying the suspension on this car is perfect. At low speeds, it can still be a bit sharp, but by and large, this is a really comfy car once you're up to speed, and those seats are like sitting on a big inflated cow. It is great. It's just really comfortable. I wish it had more back seat space, and I wish the plug-in hybrid had just more range in general, but that's a common whinge to all PHEVs, and I wish the boot was a bit bigger on the PHEV, but that makes it sound like I'm slating this car. I've been using this for a week, done 350 miles in it, done all my family duties in it, and it's been honestly really good. Now, personally, I'd rather have a diesel, but that's kind of down to personal preference, and some people, I think, are going to whinge that it's lost a bit of its je ne sais quoi, you know, its French design, with this rather more Teutonic facelift, but I prefer this, to be honest. I like that you can get it in some bright colours. I don't like that this is 36 grand, but as I said, get a petrol one. Save a load of money. I really like it. I'm going to give it eight Tim Rodies out of ten. It's a very good, reasonably affordable family SUV that focuses on the things that matter. Comfort and a bit of style, but I can't really talk about that because I'm wearing a glow-in-the-dark cat t-shirt. Yeah, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Go down to the comments, leave me the French word for a smelly slipper, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Or should I say, Auf Wiedersehen. Sorry, au revoir. <laughs>